Hello everyone. I am going to demonstrate using your monitoring system to actually trigger actions through Ansible Tower. So it's going to be kind of this interesting workflow. And so I thought for an example, I would use an apartment complex network. So I've done these for a million years, it feels like, where you deliver internet, uh, either DIA or through a data center, some point-to-point -point connection to an apartment complex, and then you manage that internet, right? And the infrastructure therein. And one of the things you typically do is you also take the support calls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my support line. I've got it right here. So I'm going to call it. My phone is ringing. There you go. You can hear my desktop phone ringing, right? It actually rings. All right. So I'm going to hang up there. And I generally will do a DID per apartment complex. That's for a multitude of reasons. One is I can do CDR so I can like match up with what my reps are doing, but also it gives me a little bit more control over what's happening. So apartment complex, it happens to be Google's DNS, all eights. So right, this is a demo site. So I'm going to in my firewall, I'm going to block access to it. You should see in just a second, a couple of packets match. All right. So now it's getting dropped. I'll come back over to Zabbix, latest data down. So Zabbix actually gives you the ability to create actions that trigger upon an event like this. And what I'm doing is I'm calling the Ansible API. So the very first thing that the Ansible API does is it takes that and it fires off a workflow. So you can see it put DND on the support line. That's not Dungeons and Dragons, it's do not disturb. So I'm using a 3CX PBX. So it doesn't have a RESTful API, unfortunately. You can pull some um, customer information out of there, but that's about it. But my Yeelink phone does have a RESTful API. And so what I do is I connect to my Yeelink phone and I put it on DND immediately so that you get this message. We are currently experiencing widespread issues at this property. Please be patient as we are diligently working to repair. Right? So what it does in essence is the instant it sees the site go down, it puts this mass message up. So uh, it'll hit that message first whenever they call in. So instead of your text getting deluged with phone calls while they're trying to troubleshoot the issue, figure out what's going on, and they actually are automatically notifying the customer, hey, there's a thing going on, so it takes care of that. Next, it reaches out to my troubleshooting probes. So I've got some, um, and I will enter the job here that I actually run. Um, I've got a few probes, and I'm using Microtix, which are uh, just little inexpensive Linux-based routers. I really call them network duct tape because you can affix anything to anything with them. So in this instance, it's passing over the uh, IP address, so all eights, 8888, and that was the host that went down. So Zapk is actually saying, hey, this is the guy that went down and I am performing some pings from a couple of different probes. One is my home router, the one right here, and then one in my Brian data center. So it's doing pings, then it's doing trace routes, and it's aggregating all that information together. After it aggregates that information, it actually creates an incident in my uh, ServiceNow instance, right? So right here, I can pop in. You can see it was the all eights device, and it's got my Brian traces, uh, home traces, Brian pings, and uh, home pings, right? So doing this information from a multitude of probes can help you figure out, is it just a single site? Is there a major routing problem somewhere? It kind of gives me an idea of where to start with this. So this could be two probes. This could be 20 probes. This could be 2,000 probes. It's whatever you want it to be. And this could be existing sites you have, remote sites uh, all over the country, you know, whatever it happens to be, some geographic diversity usually helps with this stuff. But needless to say, it goes and it creates the ticket and aggregates that information. Last, I have it actually creating a Slack message. So it, after it creates the ServiceNow ticket, it actually notifies me, hey, here's the ServiceNow ticket number and then all of that same information. So I get it from a multitude of sources. So I don't actually have to go into my ticket system, log in, get all that information, do all that stuff. It actually comes to me in a very succinct way through Slack. So just to reiterate, site went down, calls tower. Tower then reaches out to my phone system, makes a manipulation that helps me, keeps my vol call volume at bay and also assists the customers. Second, it goes out to my troubleshooting probes, performs all the same troubleshooting I would have had to done manually. Then it takes that information, creates a ticket in the ticket system with that information, which I would have had to do manually, 
And then it notifies me in a very succinct method through uh, Slack. So I think this is a super interesting use case. I'm really curious how you would tweak it. How would you tune it? What would you be monitoring? And when that monitoring fails, what would you have that do, right? It's like, how do you see this in your environment? How do you manipulate this? Please leave me some comments. I'm always welcome to hear that. Open to conversation. Thank you guys for listening and we'll talk to you next time.